Hello students, welcome back to Comsay 127 Lab. In our previous video, we discussed about ER model. In this video, you will learn about the enhanced ER model. At the end of this video, you should be able to determine the use of the enhanced entity relationship model, identify the constraints in the enhanced ER model, apply the use of aggregation in modeling a real-world problem and model real-world problems using EER model. Enhanced Entity Relationship Model or EER Model Basically, extension lang ito ng ating ER model to catch more constraints and for better modeling. Ito yung mga features niya. It creates a more accurate design to database schemas. It reflects the data properties and constraints more precisely. It includes all modeling concepts of the ER model. Again, parang extension lang siya ng ating ER model. Diagrammatic technique helps for displaying the EER schema. It includes concepts of generalization and specialization. It is used to represent a collection of objects that is a union of objects of different entity types. So, throughout this video, we will discuss these features of our EER model. So, kung ang ER model ay mayroong ER diagram, ang EER model ay meron namang Enhanced Entity Relationship Diagram or EERD. So, this is just the visual representation of the EER model and this includes subclass, superclass, specialization, generalization, union, or category, and aggregation. This features ay hindi may kita sa ating ER diagram. That's why this is an enhanced version of our ER model. So, these are the concepts that we will tackle in this video. Inheritance, Specialization, and Generalization. Okay, just to recall lang, ganito ang itsura ng ating ERD. Meron tayong Entity, we have Attributes, we have Relationship, Cardinality, and Participation. Um, sometimes, we may encounter problems where we can list entities that would share similar attributes. For example, we have here a Teacher, Student, Driver, Doctor, a lawyer and along the way we might encounter that this entities would have the same uh, similar attributes like all of them would have a name an address a birthday sex age but we also want to take note that individually as entities they also have their own unique attributes for example a teacher might have an employee number a student might have a student number Whereas a teacher doesn't have a student number, a driver don't, doesn't have a student number. So there's where inheritance comes in. Inheritance denotes the connection between a subclass and a superclass. A subclass inherits all attributes and relationship of the superclass. And a subclass may also have specific attributes and relationship of its own. Here in the right side, we have a person, which is our superclass, and we have student as our subclass. So, lahat ng attributes and relationship that we associate to this entity person will be inherited to the entity student. But, entity student as an individual entity can have its own specific attributes as well. And, it can also have its own specific relationship. So, going back in our previous example, all of this uh, five entities, a teacher, student, driver, doctor, lawyer, can now be a subclass of our superclass person. In that way, we minimize repetition of attributes and we simplify the organization of our data. We have two types of inheritance. Single inheritance or hierarchy, it results in a tree structure or a strict hierarchy. It only has one superclass. And in a multiple inheritance, also called a lattice, the subclass has more than one superclass. So to illustrate, ginito yung tura ng multiple inheritance, and ganito yung tsura ng single inheritance. In inheritance, always remember that the subclass has an is a relationship to its superclass. So this can be read as singer is an artist, actor is an artist, and a dancer is an artist. Um, don't be confused kasi yung iba kala composition to or uh, a has a relationship. So others might read this as artist, is composed of a singer, actor, and dancer, so that is wrong. For our notation, we have this circle shape that denotes relationship between a superclass and a group of subclasses. So, it represents is a relationship. 
And kapag multiple subclasses, i-coconnect nyo muna siya sa circle before you extend it to the superclass. Pero kung isa lang yung subclass niya, straight line lang, wala nang circle. And then we also have this U symbol, this is the subset symbol, kung saan nakapoint yung uh, curve nung circle, ibig sabihin tinuturo niya kung sino yung subclass. Later in our example, you will notice how to use this one. This one, conceptualize natin to from the previous slides, but to structure it, specialization, ibig sabihin, meron kang general class, and then you specialize it into subclasses. Benefit to nito, it maximizes the difference between the members of an entity by identifying the unique characteristics or attribute of each member. So, what does that mean is, for example nga, meron kang uh, superclass na person, you can specialize a subclass student so that it can be distinctly uh, distinguishable from other types of person let's say different from a teacher or, or a teacher different from uh, a driver a doctor so on and so forth so this is a top-down approach and then on the other hand we have generalization so basically meron ka namang uh, subclasses and we generalize it into a superclass Ang goal nito is to minimize naman yung difference between the entities by identifying the common features. Just like what we did in our first example with um, person as a superclass. So this one is a bottom-up approach. And then we have this jointness. So first we have this joint. An entity from a superclass can occur in at most one subclass represented by letter D. So, lalagyan lang natin ng letter D yung loob ng circle. Ibig sabihin daw, isa lang yung pwede maging subtype. In this example, we have a superclass student, and then we have subclasses freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. Kapag sinabing disjoint, isa lang yung pwede niya maging subtype. So, freshman lang, sophomore lang, hindi pwedeng uh, dalawa, or tatlo, or lahat, isa lang. And then we have overlapping. Basically, kabalik taran lang siya ng disjoint. An entity from a superclass can occur in multiple subclasses. And ang notation niya, maglalagay lang tayo ng letter O doon sa loob ng ating circle. For example, an artist can be a singer and an artist can also be an actor, a dancer, or a musician at the same time. So overlapping because an, uh, the superclass can take different uh, subtypes. Moving on to completeness constraints, we have total specialization. Every entity of the superclass must belong to at least one subclass, and this is denoted by double lines from the superclass. For example, we have here entity student, meron siyang double line, so this is total specialization. And then we have here four subclasses, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. And since ito ay disjoint, dapat lahat ng student merong exactly one uh, subclass. So that is total specialization. Now, on the other hand, we have partial specialization. Some entity of the superclass may not belong to any subclass. And it is denoted by single line from the superclass. Example, person. Um, this is also disjoint. Uh, pwede siyang maging student. Pwede siya maging teacher, pwede siya maging staff, pwede siya maging researcher. Or pwede rin wala siyang uh, classification. Uh, yun yung ibig sabihin ng partial. Hindi record na lahat ng elements ni person ay merong subtype. Aggregation. This is the process that represents a relationship between two entity as a single entity. Now, in some cases, we wanted to associate an entity with another relationship. In this example, we have a manager, and a manager manages a branch. But the manager also manages an employee who works on a branch. So the concept is, this manager manages this relationship. So we can use aggregation. In aggregation, we can group this relationship or treat this relationship as a single entity. So it's easier for us to associate another entity to it. For example, in here, a manager manages this relationship uh, employee works on a branch. So that is aggregation. Now let's try to analyze some problems and try to visualize it using our EERD. A furniture shop produces several types of chairs. 
A chair has a set of arms, materials, chair control number, height, width, and weight. Some chairs that are made by the shop are the following. Office chairs characterized by their lumbar support quality rating, wheelchair by its wheel type, and electric chair for its number of watts. A customer buys many chairs from the furniture shop. A customer has the following details, customer ID, name, birthday, and sex. A customer can only be called a customer if he or she buys from the shop. Now let's try to first identify our entities. In this problem, we can identify chair as our entity. And then the shop also made different chairs. So we have office chair, wheelchair, electric chair. So we can note that as our entities as well. And then we have customer as another entity. So let's try to draw that in our diagram. Now let's try to put the attributes. So a chair has a set of arms, materials, chair control number, which sounds like a primary key, height, width, and weight. And then for the specific type of chairs, we have office chairs characterized by their lumbar support quality rating, wheelchair by its wheel type, and electric chair by number of watts. And then the customer has the following details. A customer has a customer ID, which sounds like a primary key, name, birthday, and sex. Based on our problem and the concept of specialization and inheritance, we can put office chair, wheelchair, and electric chair as subclasses of entity chair. By putting these three entities as subclass of chair, all of these entities will inherit the attributes and relationship of the entity chair. So office chair, wheelchair, and electric chair will also have weight, width, height, arms, materials, and control number. Now for the constraints. Yung constraints sa ating diagram depende siya sa context ng ating problem or the business logic. We'll just assume that this is disjoint since hindi in-specify sa problem that a chair can take different subtype. So let's just assume that an office chair cannot be a wheelchair at the same time. And then for our completeness constraint, since hindi rin naman in-specify that all share belong to a specific subtype, so this is a partial specialization. So there might be some share that has no special attribute. Based on the problem, a customer buys chair. And a customer buys many chairs from the furniture shop. So that is one-to-many cardinality. And a customer can only be called a customer if he or she buys from the shop. So a customer has a total participation in this relationship. For this problem, try nyo muna siyang sagutan on your own. You may pause the video and then proceed na lang kayo kapag nasagutan na ninyo. A theater company has performers. A performer, so that is an entity, can be identified by its name, performer ID, which will be our primary key, age, and birth date. Age is a derived attribute because we can compute that from the birth date. The theater company classifies its performers into four types. So classifies its performers, so that sounds like a specialization. We have singers, uh, singers that are characterized by their vocal range, writers by their writing style, actors by their number of awards, and dancers by their dance genre. A performer is included in at least one type of classification set by the company. So included in at least one type. Ibig sabihin, um, one yung minimum but can be classified into more than one that will be overlapping. Ibig sabihin, a singer can be a writer, an actor, or a dancer at the same time and, uh, and other combinations pa. And for our completeness constraints, this is a total specialization. So ibig sabihin, lahat ng performers should be classified in uh, at least one classification. Many performers perform in a stadium. A stadium is identified by its stadium ID, which will be our primary key, capacity, area, and location. So that is many-to-many -many relationship. Now, reiterate ko lang that in inheritance, all of the subclasses will inherit the attributes and the relationship of its superclass. So for this example, a singer, writer, actor, and dancer entities will have performer ID name, age, and birth date as attribute and will also inherit the relationship of performer to the stadium. 
This is our last example. Pwede nyo ulit i-pause yung video and try to answer it on your own. A song has a song number, song title, several genres, and length of the song. Many songs are placed in an album. A song may or may not be placed in an album. And an album has an album name, album number, release date, and recording company. Albums must always have songs. The album and songs are created by an artist that has a stage name, real name, birth date, and artist agency. An artist can create several albums and songs. Songs and albums are always created by an artist. An artist may or may not have an album or songs. So this might look a very tricky diagram, so isa isa natin siya. So we have three entities. We have song, album, and artist. So for our attributes, starting with the song, we have number, our primary key, we have title, multiple genre, and length. And for the attributes of entity album, we have name and then number for our key attribute, recording company, and release date. For our artist, we have stage name, which will be our primary key, agency, real name, and birth date. Now let's go to the relationship, starting with song and album. So a song may or may not be placed in an album. So we have your relationship placed in. And song may or may not be placed, meaning that the participation of song in this association is optional. So we have your partial participation. But an album is always composed of song. That's why we have here two lines to represent total participation. For the cardinality, we have many songs placed in an album. So that is many to one cardinality. And we have two relationship types connected to artists. Let's start from the one connected to the whole aggregation. So we have here an artist creates song placed in an album. So in our problem, songs and albums are always created by an artist. And an album is always composed of songs. So a song may or may not be placed in an album. So this connection to the aggregation, this relationship to the aggregation, artist creates song placed in an album represents the relationship of artist for those songs placed in an album. So that is one to many cardinality because one artist can create many albums and an album and a song is always created by an artist so that has a total participation on the other hand since songs may or may not be placed in the album we also need to represent the songs that are not placed in the album since those songs are also created by an artist but they are not placed in the album we have to create a different relationship so we have your artist creates songs, which is also a one-to-many cardinality, and song has a total participation with this association. 